Hello friends, my name is Theo, and today in this exciting Mr. Media tutorial, we're going to be taking a look at Resolve Live. This is a super useful feature that you may or may not know about. If you're a DIT person, this is going to blow your mind if you don't know about this already. What it lets you do is take a camera feed into Resolve, grade it live, hence Resolve Live, and you can even display that live also. So if you're on set, you can make live previews for the directors, and it's just super easy. So the first thing we'll do to start off with is create a new project. You're going to use an empty project for this, so we'll call this Live Tutorial and create this and now we're going to want to set this up so we'll go over to davinci resolve preferences and go to video and audio io which stands for input output and for resolve live you see i have my ultra studio sdi checked so this is going to be the device that takes the video signal in unfortunately you can't record and play back from the same device so if you want to show this live on set you're going to need a, a second device so i've got my decklink studio 4k which is going to my grading monitor and so between the two of those, we'll be able to get the video in from a camera and then display it live. So you could send this out to whoever you want. But if you don't have a second one, you can also save LUTs and have those sent out to LUT boxes around set and you're, you're good to go. So once you have these set up, you'll save these. And if you change anything, you'll need to restart Resolve. We'll have that saved. So the next thing we'll do is make sure that our project resolution and frame rate is correct. So we'll go over to this little gear icon. And we are recording this in 1920 by 1080, which is correct. But our timeline frame rate should be 30 frames because that's what the camera's recording at. So if you're doing 2397, it should be that. If you're doing 60, it should be that, etc. And our video monitoring will change this to the same. So 1080p 30, and the rest of this looks fine. So if you don't have these set up right, you'll just get a black screen whenever you go into Resolve Live. So this is a good thing to check to make sure that you have the correct project settings. So then we'll just hit save and we'll create a new timeline, control N, timeline one is totally fine. And now if we pop over to the color page, there are two different ways you can access the Resolve Live. You can hit control R on your keyboard or you can go over to color, Resolve Live, on. So control R and there you see, there's Theodore, look at that. And just that easy you're on. So make sure you don't have any other software using your Resolve Live input device just in case. But if you see, I've got color grading here and I've got the display out on the monitor and we can go and grade away. So you now we can contrast this up, do whatever we want, make a look on set, really just punch this, punch this up and you know, do whatever we want, increase the saturation some. Maybe we wanna see what a LUT will look like on this. So here's from a new LUT pack, which is coming out soon. Um, something like this will probably look good. Yeah, so we get that really cliche orange teal look. Maybe we dial it back some. And if there's a lot of stuff going on, you can always go and hit this snapshot button. And this will save a look that you can go back and reference to. So if we change this up, maybe we'll use, you know, I don't know. One of these sunset ones would probably be fun. And just click through. So of course, you know, if you're working with the director on set, you can say, here's a bunch of stuff we can look at. You know, one of these guys. Or maybe something like this, and we'll bring it back down some. And we can save that. So there we have two different, you know, grades stored. And we can also just, if there's a bunch of stuff happening on set, we can go and freeze this. So now you just get this one image. We can go through and grade around with that. So, you know, maybe your talent is on set for just a little bit and or, or there's a stand in and they're lighting just for a little bit and you can hit freeze on that. You can grade away and then if the talent comes in, the director can see everything all nice and done together. So, you know, we can do some more stuff. You know, maybe this is a cool look that you want. And, you know, we can do all sorts of other cool stuff. So you can hit Alt S to create a new node. We can make a vignette happen. Do whatever we want, make this sort of a darker look. So there, and then it's all happening up on the monitor as well. So control home, director doesn't like that. We can try something different. We can go into our curves. Just all sorts of fun stuff that you can do. And of course, if you're actually gonna use this on set, be sure to look at the manual because they've got some nice little uh, other tips and tricks in there for things to make your onset experience even more better. So you know, this looks, you know, nice. It feels a little filmy, a little bit, a little bit over contrasty. I can get into that. Um, Maybe we'll add some selective saturation down here, just where it matters to give us some life. And then we'll add another look at the end, just with some curves. Because the white balance is kind of off on our camera, so we'll just play that up to a strength. And now we get this sort of hipster looking 
typical look. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed this little tutorial. I think this is a really cool feature. Maybe I'll have to do some onset color grading in the future, but I really like not having to wake up early. Um, but I'm sure there's lots of you that can use this as well. Uh, if you like it, give it a like. If you didn't give it a dislike, no matter what, leave a list down in the comments below. If you've got any other tricks for cool onset stuff like this, be sure to let me know because I think this is very cool. This idea was suggested from a comment. So, you know, I do read the comments occasionally, even whenever I go on sabbatical for a little bit. Also, check out meastumedia.com slash products where I'm going to be uploading this LUT pack soon once I come up with a name for it and once I curate it just a little bit more because we're almost all the way there. But there's also other stuff on there that's cool. Swiss LUTs, people like. Uh, people have been really liking the Atmospheres pack recently, which is cool. That's some good stuff for motion graphics because I've been doing a lot of motion graphics. So I'm sure the universe has felt that and influenced sales accordingly. Also, one little thing that I forgot to mention, whenever we save these stills, you can right-click on them and you can generate a LUT from it. So you can do that and then send that to whoever needs it on set. So if there's other monitors out there or if your camera can load it up, you, know, you can have that just in there for the future. You can be working on other stuff. It's very cool. So I think I've rambled on long enough. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Once again, I've been Theo with Meester Media. Have a great day and I will see you next time. Bye.